have my best friend here this morning, Pastor Todd Drayton. He's here. And uh, he texted me yesterday. And he let me know in proper 80s style <laughs> that he had a word for this house. <laughs> so uh, how many of you remember uh, Crush Groove? <laughs> So there's a scene in the movie where, you know, they're in an abandoned, they're an abandoned house, you know, and they're, they're trying to hook up the DJ equipment, right? So there ain't no electricity in this place. So they tap into the electricity from the pole, you know, and they bring it over. So when the guy gets it hooked up, he starts saying, it's working, it's working. Party people, if you're ready to rock, let me hear you scream. <laughs> So that tells you how good of friends me and Pastor Todd are. So he texts me that, and then he sends me the YouTube video clip of it. <laughs> I watched it at least three or four times. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not going to go into the other one, but it's good. No, no, all good, all beautiful, you know, it's great. But he just let me know that he got a word for this house. And uh, we are not going to mess around. We want to get, oh, my God. I just got messed up. I just got messed up. My beautiful wife just walked in this place. Oh my God. Woo! Glory. My God. Oh man, I'm, real, I'm all messed up now. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, Pastor Todd. <laughs> so he was so gracious. You know, he has a, an engagement that he has to go to today with his children. And but he, you know, he loves me in this house and my wife so much. He said, I'm coming, you know, but he says, you got to get me up there as soon as you can. <laughs> so I said, I'm most definitely going to do that so that you can. Oh, I don't have it. I'm sorry. But I want you to stand up on your feet. I want you to give a love of Jesus north, north for Pastor Todd as he comes up. Come on, give Jesus a prayer. You can do better than that. Give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, my God. My God. He's so right. We, we do go back. 25 years, maybe longer now. This guy is my guy, for sure. And I, I really, I meant it when I said I counted a privilege to be back with all of you today, especially on this day. This is the anniversary, this is 10 years. I get to see Pastor Tanya floating in here with all those bright colors. I mean, it was, it was, it was dim in here until she, boom, the sun just walked in this place. My, 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 my. I see why he's so messed up. He's like, oh, I'm messed up now. I, I, yeah, I. <laughs> I tell you, we give the Lord Jesus some praise for 10 years in this place. Amen. Have your seats. Please, 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 please. Have your seats. Amen. I do count it a true honor to stand before you in this uh, once in a lifetime occasion. This really is something special. Um, 10 years, nothing to slouch at. And I am so grateful. I'm, I'm really happy for Pastor Gavin and Pastor Tanya. I'm happy for all of you, but I'm really happy for my, literally my dearest friend. Really, really, really. And so, um, and he was right. I, you have to beg my pardon, because I'm going a, I'm to a do what God told me to do, and I'm going to run. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm really mad, because I told him yesterday, I'm like, Man, I, I, okay, I'll come minister, but I want to spend the rest of the afternoon. I want to go get lunch. I want to just, I want to be with my guy for this anniversary, but they had me triple booked. We did our 8 8. We did an early service this morning. Now I'm doing this one. Now I got to run. So y'all just, I'm home. This is family. Don't mind me. I'm going to just do what I got to do, but I will be back soon. I'm putting the bug in his ear now so I can really spend some time with you. Amen. I was thinking, um, you know, so like this is what 10 years looks like, huh? 
Come on, give Jesus some praise for that. Not bad. Not bad at all. Ten years. I mean, their churches don't last ten months. And y'all sitting up here all prim and proper. Ten years. My God, I'm telling you, God, somebody ought to give a God who is worthy of a 10-year praise some praise. A God who's been healing for 10 years, a God who's been delivering for 10 years, who's been saving folks for 10 years, who's been rescuing folks for 10 You need to give God some real praise. I said a God who has shown this place some favor. 10 years. My God, I'm telling you, after sojourning in this land for a decade, moving from place to place, tent to tent, <laughs> God finally has made some room for y'all over here in North Nork. Got the nerve to call it North Nork. <laughs> I take, watch this, G, on the backside of Stephen Crane. <laughs> My God in heaven. I thought about it. I'm telling you, I was really thinking about this, man. I, I, I gave it some thought. I was searching and really seeking God's face and trying to figure out what he really wanted me to say. I came in here. I had my whole thing all packed up and ready to go, but I wasn't sure. So I just prayed and prayed and prayed, and then Thursday, I really locked in. I was praying in the Holy Ghost the whole day, literally the whole day, and then finally, nothing, got nothing. I said, all right, well, I'm going to do what I got to do, and then Friday morning, 3 in the morning. I ain't slept since Friday. I'm serious. I've been messing around with you since Friday. <laughs> but I got a word for this house. It's a good word. It's a strong word. But I need you to pay attention because this is going to be life changing. I think it's going to set some things in motion. You know, sometimes God uses me prophetically and I really sense that that's just what he wants me to do today. Just drop a little something in you and, um, you know, move on. I, I was I was saying a moment ago. Um, you know, on the backside of Stephen uh, Crane, I, I thought about it. You guys have moved around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you started, you dug a well in Belleville. That's right. Mm-hmm. But they strove for that one. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to behave myself. Esek, if you're following, is Genesis chapter 26. Esek, it means contention. They strove for that when they quarreled over it, the word says. And I thought about it. They wouldn't let you do everything you wanted to with that property. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. But that's okay. Because the truth of the matter is I'm not too sure, um, you know, God had it in his long-term plans for uh, these beautiful pastors um, to be waiting tables, to be operating a church on the weekends and a restaurant by the week. And I told you that before. I thought about it. He dug that well in Belleville, and then all of a sudden, he messed around and dug another well in West Orange. Come on, church. You know what I'm talking about. But they strove for that one, too. The Bible says in Genesis 26, it was Sitna. That's another word for hostility. And I know it was a nice looking church. I told him I love that church. He used to stand behind the pulpit right there, had the pews on either side. <laughs> had that place beautiful. Y'all went in there, put your little touch on it, that boom, spark. I, I know it was a nice looking church. And you had the run of it on Sundays and, you know, most weekdays whenever you needed it. But it really wasn't yours. It was borrowed. Sitting up. See, 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 most people will get that because the Bibles that we get, they cheat. They give us a little in the margin. Oh, the Greek for sitna is hostility. But the one who really studies, who minds the scripture, who, or, who looks for the ore, the deep down jewels and gems, they'll tell you that sitna is really from the same original word as Satan. Um, the counterfeit, Satan. The one who appears as an angel of light. <laughs> and so I thought about it. I said, yeah, you know, um, even a counterfeit can pass for the real thing for a season. <laughs> My God in heaven. How many understand what I'm saying? And so you left West Orange. 
And then you manage to dig a well right here in North Newark, right down the road. And lo and behold, they didn't strive for this one. Jesus. No, they welcomed you here. We were talking about Stephen Crane a moment ago. They welcomed you here. This inner city has embraced you. And every time I turn around, I'm talking to Gavin, Pastor Gavin, and he's telling me how much favor you have with all of this stuff going on around here. And everybody loves you in this place and all the great outreach that you're doing and the amazing things that you're able to do for God. And it dawned on me, God has finally made some room for you. Come on, church. Somebody needs to give God an amen, a hallelujah on that. I said, God has made some room for LOJ North Newark right here at Ropes Place. Amen. Amen. And so we name this place, not Ropes Place, Rehoboth. Because that's exactly what Isaac, uh, Isaac named it. The scripture says, he said, at last, God has made room for me. Jesus. And so as a result, I see, if you read the rest of that scripture, it goes on to say, and we have been very fruitful. And you have been very fruitful. All of you have been very fruitful right here in this land. Did you know the meaning of the word Rehoboth? It actually means broad places. Broad places. Um, freedom to move around. Come on, church. Come on, church. Space to operate, in other words. The liberty to do whatever it is God has called you to do right from this place here in North Newark. Amen? Amen. I know some of you think this is a little place. It's a little building. I know that's what you think. But that's just because you still have that sojourner frame of mind. <laughs> oh, don't let me. I told you it might be a little strong, but only a little bit. This is just the caffeine. We'll get the sugar and sweeten it up in a minute. <laughs> No, but I think of maybe one or two think that, you know, maybe this is not as big as we would like it. Maybe there's uh, maybe some more space for the youth. <laughs> Pastor wants a bigger office or so. I don't know. But but no, I'm just telling you, if that's the case, you probably haven't shed that. Probably. I'm not probably haven't shed that wilderness mentality like God's people when it was their time to inhabit Canaan. See, that's what happens. You, you spend all your life in poverty, and then suddenly you get some money, right? And, and, and although you have all this money, you still have that same mindset. Come on. You're still trying to scrimp and save on generic paper towels at the dollar store. Come on, man. You better stop playing. You need to go ahead and spend that extra dollar fifty and get you some bounty, the quicker picker upper. Get you the name brand. You got money now. You can afford it. Stop scrimping. You got some money now. Change your mindset. That's what I'm saying. So for those who think this place is too small, I have to warn you, be very careful. You don't want to limit God. Come on. Our God is a big God. Can you say amen? See, you're still thinking about the Esek and the Sitna and the, all that stuff you left behind. And the reality is you're probably still in the frame of mind of the past 10 years. But you see, we have a visionary here who's not looking at the past 10 years. He's looking at the next 25 years. You're worried about all the battles and all the warfare and what it took for us just to get here. And I appreciate all that. You did dig a few wells and you did lose those wells. And they ran you out of some of these towns, and I get all of that. But uh, God told me to tell you, you are now in a broad place. You are on ropes place in a broad place, which we will now refer to as Rehoboth. Can you say amen? amen. And instead, I just want you guys to start recognizing all the broad opportunities that you have right before you, right here at ropes. Amen. I'm preaching already, if you didn't know it. You think this is just part of my anniversary introduction. No, I'm halfway through the message. God gave me two things to say to you. I'm getting ready to give you number one. When I look around this building, I see thousands of people that have been fed by your food distribution every month. 
And oh, by the way, uh, they're not just getting food. From what I understand, they get diapers. Babies get, get the things that babies need. Women get uh, feminine hygiene products. I, as I understand it, they're getting quality of life assistance, not just some food. You did that. That's what you're doing from Rope's Place. They ain't just getting some fish and loaves, G. They getting quality of life stuff. I see TV broadcasts. I see Let's Talk. I see a TV program. I see stuff going around the world right from this building. I see new music. Where's my man on the piano? I see new music, singles, dropping singles. Hot new Christian artists rising out of this building, this church right here. That's what I see. I've even seen books written from this place. Money on my street. <laughs> Woo! I love it every time I see money on my street. I, I got to give you something. I never told you that, but I loved it. Every time I see it. Got the nerd to even have a children's book. I see, you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you this morning. God said Rehoboth, broad places. You did all that right from here because God has made room for you because God gave you favor in this city I just looked up and I turned around now they're giving them not the keys to the city but somebody gave them a plaque the other day and your 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 local officials are now underwriting your missions outreach as I understand it they're giving you money to have block parties I'm like what in the world is going God has given you favor because God has made room for you here You've been in Rehoboth all this time, whether you know it or not. And God brought you here, maybe not directly, a well, another well, or this or that. Maybe not directly, but God brought you here for a specific purpose. I'm almost done. I might as well tell you the real reason why I'm here. Listen to me, L.O.J. North Nork. God told me to tell you, I see you becoming the vehicle. Get this. You should write this down. It's going to be on record, but you write it in your notes. Today is September 17th, 2023, so that when it comes to pass, you'll know that the Lord has spoken by me. I see you becoming the vehicle for the spiritual and economic empowerment of this entire community. Period. End of story. That's what I see by the Holy Ghost, and I hope you catch that. Amen. I hope you receive that word right there. Because I see God using you, L.O.J. North Nork, watch this, to lift this entire populace. To bring, watch this, both the knowledge of God and some much-needed economic care and relief to those people that you serve right here in this neighborhood. See, that's what all those financial workshops were for, if you didn't know. All those workshops pastors been giving you over the years, that's what they've been about. You thought it was just, hey, you know, this is for us, the church, and it is, and you're going to benefit. But no, this thing is bigger, and he showed me it's deeper, it's bigger. He's had you guys in process for something bigger than you can even imagine. Pastor doesn't just preach the gospel. He puts together financial literacy programs for you guys, counseling workshops. He brings in diverse specialties. He ain't brought me in in a long time, but that's all right. I ain't mad at him. <laughs> he brings all these diverse specialties in here to what? To empower you and to empower the lives of anyone outside these windows that would like to come in and learn and get something. Amen. And so I can really see God doing something with Pastor Gavin and this church. And this is going to mess you up because this kind of messed me up. That, that, that I haven't seen him do in 50 years. The, and let me say it this way. The last time I saw him do it, it was about 50 years ago. What are you saying, Pastor? I see him building a huge, a full gospel ministry. None of this stuff you see on TV but right here in the inner city right here now you may not stay here in fact I'm pretty sure you're not gonna stay here I'm pretty sure you have to get a bigger house 
And it may be sooner than you think, but I really do believe that. It may not be. It may be five years from now, but that's on him. I don't know all the details, but I can tell you what he's revealed to me. I see he, you guys building a huge inner city ministry right here that no man will ever be able to gainsay. And you know why I said that hasn't happened in about 50 years? I'll tell you why I say that. Because that's exactly what God did, and you will remember this, Mother, for Pastor Fred Price out in South Central Los Angeles. <laughs> you remember Fred Price? He's passed. I think he passed away from COVID a couple years ago. But he raised up, he started in South Central LA with all that red versus blue. Crips and bloods, gangs and violence and all kinds of drugs and crime. And out of that nothingness, you don't appreciate this, but out of that nothingness rose the first mega church in the United States of America. The first. He was a little simple blue collar guy. I think he worked for a paper factory or something, cutting paper or doing something. I can't remember all the details, but I remember Pastor Fred, uh, Fred Price, and he had a style like nobody else. He could teach that word of God. He could tear it up, man. You know what he did? He was into, he started with the Episcopalians, I believe, then he messed around with the Methodists until he got, he got saved, started talking in tongues, started following Kenneth Hagin, and that's when God blew on his ministry. He began to teach the same stuff, the same word of faith that he got from Hagin and all those dudes, and the next thing you know, that little speck of nothing in South Central Los Angeles messed around and God just blew on it. He also moved around several times, just like you. God showed me just that clear. He moved around. He started with nothing, grew to 300. Next time I heard, it was up to like 1,400. He ended up having one service, then two service, then three services, filled to capacity. They couldn't until finally, watch this, God messed him up so bad that he finally said, we forget this third, three services, I'm old. And I, he, he said, he just went and bought the Pepperdine, the old Pepperdine University. He bought the college campus. And people don't realize this, but he was the first to construct a big dome like the amphitheater style um, uh, uh, sanctuary. The first, he called it the Faith Dome. I think that was still part of his ever-increasing faith TV show. But that's exactly what happened. He called it the Faith Dome, and it was the first domed big time sanctuary in America. Not Osteen, not Jake's, not Copeland, none of those guys. Not Rick Warren, the purpose driven life 10 years, 15 years ago, none of them. Fred Price was the first. And that right there is what I see for you, LOJ North North. That's what I see in you, Pastor. That's what God showed me. The last 10 years, you, they were designed to prepare you and to instill some stamina and some perseverance, some grit, some faith. I know you're on faith big time now, but some trust, some total reliance on God. And it's taken 10 years. And it may take another five. I don't know. Again, I don't know the times or the seasons. But all the while, you were sojourning here. And there, and moving around from place to place, you prove faithful. Amen. Through it all. You better hear me, church. And now, 10 years later, God has just given you a little, ooh, get this, get this, get this, get this. I'm just getting this. Just gave you a little taste of Rehoboth right here. This ain't nothing but a little taste of Rehoboth. You hear me? Um... This is just a seed on the eventual harvest. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all think this 10 years is a big deal. Y'all think this is as good as it gets. This ain't nothing. Let me just tell you, this is just the seed on what is coming down the road. In fact, this is the word of the Lord. This, this is one. I got two. Here's number one. I, write this in your notes. L.O.J. North Nork. Thus saith the Lord. You ain't seen nothing yet. Jesus. That's exactly what he told me to tell you. You ain't seen nothing yet. Jesus. In fact, God said, I hath not seen. 
ear hath not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart, the mind, the thought, or the imagination of the ridiculously blessed future that he has in store for this church. I added that last piece, but it's almost in there. Of the things that God has prepared for them who love him. And I'm looking at somebody who loves. I'm, in fact, I'm looking at a bunch of somebodies who love him. That's the word of the Lord, church. That's the first thing I was supposed to tell you. I'm moving on. You ain't seen nothing yet. My God, my God. Here's the second thing. In keeping with the theme of this anniversary, I saw it around. Oh, it's back there. Don't stop. Keep building, right? That's the theme for this year. Don't come off that wall. Amen. Hear me, church, because this is important. Don't abandon the ship now. Oh, you've come too far. You better hear me. I said, don't you give up on Pastor Gavin's vision. Um, you're almost there. Oh, I, I know the road has been rough. I get it. It has not been easy. I understand that. I know the journey has been long, and I know it's sometimes unforgiving. I understand. I know there are some folks who started with us who weren't able to hang in there with us. I get all of that. I'm a pastor, too. I, I understand. But let me just tell you something. All of that is nothing more than just a little distraction. Come on, come on, come on. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're getting this. I said all of that is nothing more than a little distraction. Uh, for all the sand ballots, for all the Tobias, uh, for the broken baptismal, right, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that is just a little, uh, all the members who left, who got an offense, and that's all a distraction. Do you hear me, church? Those are just the distractions that the enemy is trying to use to keep this church from fulfilling the will of God the future that God has in store for you, and the destiny that you're supposed to be walking in. Which means, watch this, enjoy this anniversary. It gets a little rough here. Enjoy this anniversary while it lasts. Because whether you realize it or not, your theme is prophetic, which is why I believe he gave me a prophetic word. Your theme is prophetic. Don't stop building. Don't stop. Keep building. Don't come off that wall. You're doing a great work. Don't leave your post. Your theme is prophetic. Let me go ahead and make it plain. I need you to understand. And this is a little bit of a heads up. In the coming days, I have no doubt, the devil is sure to test your resolve. I believe that's just to see if you learned anything from this anniversary personally, because God is already telling you, don't you stop building. Don't you get distracted. Don't you come off that wall. Don't you come off your post. Don't you give up. Don't you, you better hang with this chariot as it continues to go. Don't do it. How many know Satan wants nothing more than to prevent God's people from having what God wants them to have? from reaching their promised land, from fulfilling the will of God. That's all he wants to do. And we're not ignorant of his devices, are we? Come on. We know how to overcome him, don't we? I got to get out of here. Don't we? We know how to overcome the devil. How do, how do we overcome the devil? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? We overcome him by the blood of the lamb. What else? The word of our testimony. What else? And, they lo and that's the only person that said it. And I'm glad he said it because most Christians will not even, they don't even know that exists. What are we talking about? Here, I'll read it to you. Revelation 12, 11. 12, 11. Listen, you should write that down. 12, 11. This is the part two. And they overcame him, who? That old serpent, the dragon. That's, if you read further up in the chapter, you'll get the context. They overcame him, how? By the blood of the lamb and... Notice the ands. Ands are big words in your Bible. They connect things. You can't get an end of the sentence or a period there if there's an and, so you got to keep reading. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and, see it's not done yet, 
People know the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What they don't know is there's another and there. There's a third thing there. There's another requirement there. And oh, by the way, you need all three. And they love not their lives unto the death. That right there is the second word God gave me. The first word is you ain't seen nothing yet. The second word is love not your life to the death. How are we going to overcome the enemy? I just gave you a warning, a heads up. I'm sure he's going to come to test your resolve. You ain't going to get to the level that we've been talking about, like with a cakewalk. You better know he's not going to sit by and let you just walk into the covenant blessings that are yours. I'm certain there will be a test or two along the way. But how will you overcome him? That's the thing that I have to get across to you. You will overcome him by the blood of the lamb. The word of your testimony, and that's that third part. We already know what the blood of the lamb is. That's the finished work of Jesus Christ. You can't improve on the blood. That, that's done. The Bible says, in fact, the Bible says, after Jesus did what he did, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, those in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. You overcome him by the finished work of the cross. That's number one. Number two, you over him, come, uh, overcome him by the word of your testimony. That's your strong confession. That's you declaring the word of God over your situation. Come on, you know, it. whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. No, I bind. There ain't no cancer in my body. I bind that. I'm believing God. You overcome him by your strong confession. You know that as well. Everybody remembers those two, but the third one is the one that he put me on to leave you with. And that one is this. That we love not our lives unto the death. Love not our lives unto the death. Okay, Pastor Todd, what are you saying? I'll make it plain, L.O.J. North Nork. You have to be willing to sacrifice for the kingdom of God. You got to be willing to give your lives, if necessary, to advance his kingdom. Listen to me, church. You have to adopt the, uh, the, the attitude and the mindset that Jesus had. You have to be able to say, we count it not robbery to donate when pastor calls for a special offering. Jesus. We count it not robbery when pastor says we're going to do outreach for the next four Saturdays in a row. Well, I just lost my weekend because I'm. I, I'm going to make the sacrifice that God is asking of me. How many understand what I'm saying? We count it not robbery to put our hands on the plow and not look back so that we can further the vision of this house. You got to get to the place where you love not your life to the death. If you want to overcome this enemy that will come against you and try and stop this church, somebody's going to have to lay their life down. I'm telling you, prophetically, where you're headed, I see this potentially becoming the greatest ministry in the state. Maybe, 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 possibly the greatest ministry on the East Coast. Who knows? Who knows what God's going to do with you? But with that kind of elevation, there's going to come some real heat. I'm telling you, if you read the story that your theme comes from, chapter 5 and chapter 6, you understand that uh, Sambalot and uh, Tobiah and Geshem and all them dudes, they didn't just write discouraging letters, did they, G? <laughs> they weren't just trying to, uh, you know, discourage God's people. They weren't just talking junk and gossiping and ridiculing them and making fun. If a little fox runs on and knock that masonry down. That's not all they were doing. They were trying to assassinate Nehemiah. And the people of God. Four times, in fact, they said in chapter 6. And in chapter 5, they talk about the battles that they had already had. They had already started to attack him on the, on the flanks. And so he had to put his guys, put his soldiers to work just so they could build. They were trying to do him harm and, in fact, kill him. So we're not just talking about a few haters or some petty jealousy. Well, amen, pastor. 
We're talking about that Revelation 12, 12 devil. I just talked to you about Revelation chapter 12. If you read up there, around, uh, verse 12, he says that the enemy, the devil, that old serpent, the dragon, has come down having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. And that's why, church, I need you to be prepared for what lies ahead. The best days of this ministry are just around the corner. Again. Enjoy this anniversary. It's great. But this ain't nothing. You just wait to see what God has in store for you. I'm telling you, the enemy's not going to hardly sit by and let you get blessed by God without trying to stop you. Just like the enemies of Naaman tried to get his folks to come down off that wall and take these secret meetings so that they can go assassinate him. But I'm going to tell you what God told me. You will defeat your adversary at every turn. Listen, if you enforce the blood covenant against him. No devil, you're under my feet. I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm a child of God. You know how to, you know how to enforce the blood against him. The Lord has defeated you. You are defeated for, you will overcome him at every turn if you enforce the blood covenant against him. Number two, if you exercise authority by your confession over him. Your pastor just released a blessing on you five minutes ago. As soon as praise and worship, well, let me bless you. I bless you. No, no voodoo, no witchcraft, no. By your strong confession. That's how you get rid of the enemy. The words coming out of your mouth. And not just any words. Make sure they are words that are traced back to the Bible. I confess I'm going to win that lottery. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> Come on, church. No. Nah. Uh-huh. I confess I shall live and not die and declare the glorious works of the Lord. Now, that's in the Bible. Yeah, so that's what you confess. Okay, we got it. You exercise the authority of your confession over him. That's number two. And number three, the most important part of all is this. You love not your life to the death. In other words, be willing to sacrifice for the house of God. This house, your house, this church. Amen. You hear me, L.O.J. North North? Keep working. Don't stop building. We sing that song. I give myself away. You know that song? So you can use me. Well, that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. You can't just sing it. You're going to have to mean it now. You're going to have to live it now. This year, the next five years, whatever it is, you're building a great work for God. You can't let anyone or anything stop you. Not even you. Jesus, my God. Ooh, get this, get this, get this. Not even you. You got to love your life not to the death. You can't even let you get in the way. Can you say amen? amen. No, you got to learn to love not your own life to the death. Uh, love not your own money to the death. Love not your own Netflix to the death. Come on, that maybe that rings a bell. Love not your own free time to the death. Somebody got to get here early and help set the church up. You got to love not your own life. You can't even get in the way. Love not your own Saturdays to the death. Your Sunday morning. You I, Look, anybody knows me. I would love to turn over and get two more hours of sleep every Sunday morning. But I don't love my life to the death. I'm the first one. Well, that's a lie. I'm not the first one there. But I try to get there as early as I can. <laughs> After 10 years, I'm 10 years old in about three months. So I'm going to be doing this right here in three months. After 10 years, I, that's one of the liberties I've taken. I don't get there at, at, at o'clock. I get there at about 15 o'clock, like 20 years. <laughs> that's the, but that's a small liberty I take. I deserve that. Pastor deserves to walk in a couple minutes late. My God, the, what they do to me all, don't tell them I said, this ain't on record, right? We not, they not putting this on Facebook. Are Church, I love you. You know I'm just joking. I'm just doing this for these people. That's all. <laughs> you got to love not your Saturdays to the death. That's how you're going to build this great work. That's how you're going to withstand the enemy when he's, no doubt, 
rears his ugly head. I'm telling you, whether he comes in the form of Sambalat or Tobiah, whether he comes in the form of a money crisis, a health crisis, it doesn't matter. The same God who's brought you this far. The same God who's brought you this far without abandoning you, you better know. He will continue to carry you through whatever you got to go through in the days ahead. Can you give God some praise? Just remember, Jesus has already declared, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. That's what Jesus said. He said, in fact, he said, all who you have given me, Father, I have kept, and nobody has been able to pluck them out of my hands. That's exactly right. And I do believe Jesus keeps his promises. If you're safe in his hands, you're going to be all right. You hear me? You're going to be all right. So here's my last words. I just want to final words. Encourage you. Keep building LOJ North Nork. Don't you dare stop. You're doing a great work for the Lord. I'm telling you. Now's not the time to flake out, flame out, burn out, or quit. Amen? Your best days are ahead. And I'm telling you, I will warn you, they're going to require some sacrifice. Maybe more than he's asked in the past. I don't know. He hasn't told me anything. I promise. We haven't talked. He didn't ask me to share any of this. This is what God gave me. I don't know what Pastor Jason said. I didn't even watch Friday. I have no idea what went on this weekend. Only thing I've talked about to him is Crush Groove and Beat Street. That's it. <laughs> I promise you. I have no idea. If anybody said anything, I don't know anything about it. I literally haven't said anything to get Pastor at all. At all. But he may ask you for a little bit more. So I think God just wants you to know what you're working for. Your best is yet ahead, and you really haven't seen anything yet. And so just remember, whenever he asks, love not your life unto the death. Love not your life unto the death. And then I'll just give you this one for free. I'm done. See, I'm closing it up. I'm done. I'll give you this for free. If you can do that, if you can battle the enemy by enforcing the blood covenant against him if you can battle the enemy back by your strong confession and if you can battle the enemy back that would try to destroy this work by pitching in and loving your life not to the death i'll leave you with this one word be not deceived god is not mocked whatever you sow that's exactly what you're gonna reap can you hear me church you mess around and sow a couple of those Saturdays and watch God land you in Cancun or Tahiti somewhere. Don't mess with me. I'm prophesying European vacations in this place. Whatever he asks is a small thing. Because God said you ain't going to sow and not reap. I'm done. I love you. I really love you. I wish I had more time to be with you today. I really do. But I got to run, brother. My God. Come on, you can do better than that. What a word. Jesus. Talking about drop the mic when I'm finished and watching smoke. Oh, my God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My God, my God.